Hi everybody, this is part two of the video I did of Forrest Finn talking about his art business. So I hope you guys enjoy. And then, so where is, you bought the house? You bought the house. I bought the house in Taos. Okay. The garage that was full of furniture, the guest house that, that, that Eric Sloan rented from Gaspard in 1925. All of those stories are wonderful stories. And I interviewed, Frank Waters was a good friend of mine. He was probably Gaspard's best friend in Taos. And I interviewed him and he wrote a forward to one of my books for me. And it was so interesting to, the stories that, and I used to, Alexander Fashion, I went out of my way to become a friend of hers. She lived in Taos. She was the widow of, of Fashion, Nick, Nikolai. She called him Fashion. <laughs> Never called him Nick or Nikolai. And, and, uh, I used to have two birthday parties a year for her. And uh, she, she spoke English, but I, I kept telling her to speak slower because I couldn't understand her words. And, and, and she always laughed when I did that. But, but she would at these birthday parties. We always had them in her studio, in the fashion studio up at Taos. And I told her she could invite anybody she wanted to. She never invited a man. Everybody she invited was was women. But all of them, all of them had known Nikolai Fashion and and Alexander. We called her Tinkerbell. Mm -hmm. But uh, I had a wonderful opportunity to talk to all these people that knew Fashion now. I went out of my way to, to meet Well, Milam Rupert went to Bali with Fashion in 1938, but there's this gal, I can't think of her name, I went to California to interview her. She went to Mexico with Nikolai Fashion in 1936 on a train. And there was a guy by the name of Black also went to, went on with them. They were students of Fashion's, and then the two brothers of... Uh, the guy that, that that produced Tarzan, what was his name? The, the, the artist, the writer that did the... Anyway, his two sons were on that trip and they went down there and they met Diego Rivera and wonder, wonderful stories. Mm -hmm. and Fishing was, was thinking about marry, marrying this gal and they, they were planning to do it down in Mexico and then they had some kind of a little fight and she she got mad and came back on a train by herself and that really bothered Fashion and and he never did remarry after that and then she turned around and married some other, some guy in California but I interviewed her at great length for uh, for three days mm -hmm. I interviewed Marilyn Rupert wow. I mean I, w I was really I went to Russia a number of times looking for Fashion painting oh, you and did. in 1976. Because Armand Hammer had introduced me to Madame Petrova, who was the Russian Minister of Culture for our Western and American Affairs, he introduced me to her, and, and she and I, there's a circus in Moscow every night, and she and I used to go to the circus every night because it was a place where we could talk, and, and this was 1975, I guess, and at the height of the Cold War. and I, I made a handshake deal with her to, for our five-year cultural expo exchange program. The first year, we were going to exchange Nikolai Fashion paintings. He was a Russian-American expatriate. And uh, so I went to 36 Russian, I mean, I went to eight different Russian museums and borrowed 36 fashion paintings. Uh, in those days, he didn't sign his paintings very often. Mm -hmm. But you could look at a fashion and tell that that was fashion. And, mm -hmm. and so I borrowed 36 of those things out of eight different Russian museums, picked them out myself, including the big portrait of Lenin. 40 inch portrait of Lenin was painted by fashion. And, and I, I found the Karl Marx portrait, and, and I wanted that because it, it was a much better painting and more interesting. And, but I already had, I already had Lenin's portrait and Madame Petrovic and she didn't want me to take both of them. She said it looks too political, and so she would. I didn't take the Karl Marx portrait, but they're hanging in my gallery in Santa Fe. I paid for everything that cost dollars, and she paid for everything that cost rubles. And 
So now they're hanging, they're hanging them in my gallery. I had to hire a, a Russian curator to, to accompany the paintings. They, they take the frames off to ship them, and then they take the frames apart. The frames come in four pieces, mm -hmm. and they put them back together. But I had to hire this, pay for this Slava Titov, what was his name, a Russian curator. And, and they're hanging the paintings, and, and Madame Batova and I are walking around looking at them, and she said, where did you get the Repin? Elia Repin was Fessin's teacher. One of the greatest painters that ever lived was Repin. It wasn't signed, but she looked at it and said, where did you get the Repin? I said, that's your painting. She said, that's not Fessin. She said, that's Repin. And I couldn't, uh -huh. I couldn't believe that Repin was, you know, he was, he, to me, he was the Caesar, the Napoleon of, of Russian painters, and mm -hmm. uh, but I was thrilled to have that painting. It, it wasn't one of the great paintings in the show, but but I had we owned those thirty-six fashion paintings, and people came from all over the world, London and Rome, and artists came just to photograph the, those Russian paintings. They'd never never been seen, many of them. Mm -hmm. and then I called her on. A, my wife said, "Well, is Madame Batova coming to the opening of the show?" And, I said, God, I don't know, and I called her on the phone. It was, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. She said, Forrest, is that why you called me to ask me to come to the show? She said, don't wake me up anymore. Yes, I'll be there. And she hung up the phone. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was repar day, yeah. really. I right. Mean, she, but she was a wonderful lady. She, she had been the uh, public, public relations gal in the Russian embassy in New York. She wore... If you went to Russia in those days, everybody was wearing gray and brown and black mm -hmm. babushkas, and but Madame Matova wore yellow and red, and I mean, wonderful gal, and she was on the Today Show with 100 million people watching, and, and Diane Sawyer says, well, Madame Matova, where did you get that wonderful pen? You, necklace you're wearing. She said, <coughs> well, that's Zuni. And Mr. Finn from the prestigious gallery in Santa Fe, Finn Gary gave this to me. And <coughs> I mean, I did, that was about $50,000 $50, worth of publicity. Oh, wow. But she was a great gal. Yeah. The, the story is not a happy ending, but I don't, I don't want to go into that. But I'll, Armin, Armin Hammer, he, he owned a telex. Do you know what a telex is? A telex was a forerunner of a fax machine or, I mean, fax machines had never been heard of in those days. Mm -hmm. and, and the only way I could talk to Madame Petrova was through the telex machines at Occidental Petroleum in, in New York. Okay. So was it, that's kind of like a teletype, like teletype machine, maybe Say that again? teletype, like a teletype machine, maybe. Uh, I don't, re I don't remember because I would call New York and then they would send the telex okay. out of the headquarters of Occidental Petroleum. Wow, that's expensive, and I was making a, a few dollars, not a lot of money, but I wanted the government to sponsor this show, and. Senator Clinton from New Mexico wrote letters to the State Department and got no place and they started hassling me and so finally I just decided that I'd pay for them myself. And it was so it was so much fun, although it was expensive. The deal was it's against the law for a Russia for a ruble to leave Russia. Okay. And so the deal was that that she would pay for everything that cost rubles getting out of Russia. And when they landed at JFK in New York, I started everything after that was my expense. And that was so you could have your gallery show with the what? Boy. That was so you could have your show at your gallery. Yeah. And then I sent I sent the thirty six paintings to the Fry Museum in Seattle and then to the Buffalo Bill Museum in, in Cody, Wyoming. And there was some, 1976 was the height of the Cold War. So here's this little kid in Santa Fe, New Mexico, population 50,000 people. 
showing communist paintings and portrait of Lenin and on and on and on. And that, that was pretty good because Santa Fe is a cultural town. They, they saw that it was art and not politics. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't true up in Cody. The people picketed and I think the governor got in the act and, you know, we're going to do this and blah, blah, blah. And, and, but it was, I think it was one of the great shows. And, and one of the paintings hanging was I want to say the artist Lipilov was one of the one of the world's great paintings. I mean, you you throw all the artists in the world in then, and this would hang with Rubens and Botticelli and and those painters. Wow! I hope nobody's watching, but I think it was the best two shows that New Mexico ever had. New Mexico normally has shows of living artists, but the, you know. The art is so good, and mm -hmm. particularly the ta the old Taos painters. And but there's Santa Fe is, is and Taos is full of really great contemporary painters too. You can go in a gallery in Santa Fe, and you want to buy everything on the wall. Mm -hmm. A lot of talent. Yeah. Yeah. There is. There are a lot of art galleries here in town. They, they say two hundred and something. Is there? But mine was mine really, really was the first really art gallery. There was there was the Jameson Gallery and and the Wilson Gallery, but they were just the Jameson Gallery was owned by Margaret Jameson, whose husband built it and died before it opened. So here's Margaret Jameson who didn't know anything about art, inherited this gallery and, and she opened it and ran it and she did a really good job. She was a neat lady. Mm -hmm. And a guy by the name of Wilson had a gallery that was that was good. He dealt him. Mm -hmm.